Hey everybody, so this is going to be preview number two for the upcoming version of 6 release. Now this might be as close as we get to what will eventually be the final version, as there really isn't a huge amount of changes left. Right now in the queue for changes is pretty much unit testing, bug fixes, and updating the computer craft add-on that we have going. Um, kind of give you an idea of what the amount of changes look like. Um, the last version was released, which was uh, the 6 preview, uh, was back in about April-ish. Um, and now we're all the way in May. It's been about a month time. Not as much work as I would have liked, but that's what happens when you try to plan ahead and and then life is like, hey, we're going to keep you from actually developing. Um, as for changes that have happened, um, recipes for a lot of content, uh, bomblets are now craftable, uh, clusters are craftable, so fix those issues. Uh, we've got some radar improvements that I'll be showing off and a massive quantity of configs for modpack development servers. Everything that does damage is now configurable. Everything that causes damage now has a proper damage source, which we should integrate with other mods better. Um, a lot of things that didn't have configs previously now have configs. Um, you can kind of look at what will eventually be the change log later for the exact list of things. But it's things like making sure we have configs for contagious, chemical blast, uh, ability to add um, other mods armors into the config list. So you can uh, say how much protection you get from different sources like chemical, biological radiation. Uh, we finally have radioactive blocks again. Um, not something I really wanted to add, but given atomic science has fallen behind, we got to have some kind of content in there so that the new cat does something more than just make a big boom. Um, and you can kind of get an idea with scanning through this list. You know, there's a lot of just small things that went through. Most of the work has really been spent on adding configs, making sure that every um, piece is configurable. Um, so nukes have replacement configs, so you can decide um, how blocks are replaced, um, how that replacement works, how often that chance of replacement is. You can support not only blocks from vanilla in the mod itself, but also from other mods. So if you have a mod that you like their radioactive block better, you can switch out from our radioactive block to their radioactive block or utilize their mutated grass or anything else that you like about that mod that you want to see the nuke also support. Um, similar config works on flying blocks um, and other content will be getting that eventually. I don't know if we'll do it for the 112 version, but once we get to 120, I plan to make as much self as configure as possible. Now, instead of you all staring at my commit history, uh, let me go ahead and actually get into the game and show you the various things that I kind of want to show off. Um, so first thing I'm probably going to show off is going to be the new missile model for Cluster. So if you saw in previous versions, we were recycling um, an existing uh, missile model. I now have created a missile model. And this is not the final version of it. I still have a few little changes to work on for things like dithering, um, small corrective texture changes, and so on. Uh, but this is Cluster right here. I got it about as close as I could get to making it look somewhat like a cluster without making it A, look boring, or B, go completely nuts in the geometry. I'm still not the happiest about how it looks, but it's, you know, it's Minecraft. So we're getting as good as we're going to get given the limitations of what Minecraft's um, art style lends to as well as what its model style allows for um, as getting complex rotations and out of Minecraft models isn't very possible. Um, next to it's a breaching missile to kind of give it an idea of the size. So it's much more chunkier, much more beefier. And I've almost started calling this the ugly duckling of the missile set just because this is it, it literally looks like a brick. Or, you know, hitting somebody with a club or something. It's not the greatest visual. But I, I'm at least content with what it is. Um, as compared to some other muscle models, it does at least look nice. And it is at least meeting um, some level of aesthetic similarity to what we already have content-wise while not looking like the old missiles. So those from not familiar with the old mod, the old mod's cluster missile um, literally looked like you duct-taped a couple of the missiles to the outside of it and called it a day. It was not very aesthetically good. And there was only two versions of it, the regular cluster and the nuclear. Um, which I still love finding old comments on the nuclear one where somebody's like, this is this is actually what a nuke really looks or it's actually nice even really looks like with the Merv support. I'm like, people kind of overlooked the fact that the Minutemen 1 was a single nuclear and only later Minutemen's actually had the Merv ability. Uh, but that's getting into details. So you've seen the missile model. It still works about the same as the previous preview. It clusters, it disperses. I'm not going to show that content again. I have made some changes to the math and other things, but they're not nearly as important as content. Um, as for some changes that are actually more important, as you can notice, I've been having particle or like potion effects of me. So what we're standing on is one of the radioactive blocks. It's not the prettiest looking, but it's meant to get the idea across that you have entered in a radiation area. For those who are not super familiar um, with how nukes kind of work and stuff, when a nuclear weapon goes off, it will um, throw out radioactive material everywhere. This is basically leftover stuff that didn't quite 
get used up in the blast. And this is kind of why more modern nuclear weapons are a, a lot less dangerous from a radiation perspective as older ones. So the very first original ones we had did not consume their material very well and would irradiate everything in the area. This is kind of what the ICBM um, mods version that's themed after is that much more dirty-esque style of nuke. Um, it's a much more radioactive where compared to the modern versions because they use a fusion process by basically detonating a fission bomb next to a whole bunch of, um, I, I think it was a type of hydrogen is what they use. I forget, it might be called tritium or something. But they um, do that to start a fusion process, which consumes most of the fuel and leaves you very little radioactive material. Although you will get secondary stuff from like the ionization and everything else. It's really fun if you ever read into how, how nukes work. But ideally, we're mimicking um, the basic pr principle that it's not consuming the material, so it's kicking it out in the world, and that material is getting embedded in things. This is the ideal behind how atomic science was supposed to work, um, and this is the reason why I was waiting so long for that to get to a point of stable performance, so that way I could, in ICBM, utilize the same system without having to make new blocks, as atomic science was built on the ideal that that radioactive material would slap into a block, make the block radioactive without giving you a new block ID. So you wouldn't be able to visually see something's radioactive, but your character would feel the side effects. You would see the side effects in the environment, like stuff would die off, it would decay, um, animals would get sick, your player would get sick, so on. If you had a Geiger counter, Geiger count would go off. Because in real the real world, you really can't see um, radioactive material that easily that has been embedded in things. This is the reason why um, when they work on reactors and everything else in real life, everything that touches that area basically gets put into a drum and counted as radioactive waste, even though it's really only outside of it that's really contaminated. Um, which, for those who didn't know, um, who actually looked into reactors, those barrels that they have um, that people think are full of toxic waste actually are not. They're just full of things like lab equipment, spare parts, everything else. Because everything that gets in that reactor room they treat as contaminated and they put into barrels. The actual nuclear waste itself is basically these little tiny tablets that are like an inch in size. They're really tiny, they stay in the core of the reactor, they'll pull that rod out, toss in a water pole, and that's your actual waste. There's there's not a lot of material to it, it's really small, and it's hilarious that every time I see a TV show or movie or anything else, it doesn't even come close to mimicking what the real world is. But getting back to the content here, and also let me set time to day. It's like time set day in this version. Um, we produce basically right out blocks. We have two versions, we have dirt and we have stone. They both look kind of boring. Little uh, particle specks on the outside, but you get um, radioactive radiation, so you'll take damage and you'll get a withering potion effect. That's meant to kind of kill you a little bit faster. Let me go find an area somewhere over here, and I'll set off one of the nukes so you can kind of see what it looks like from a deforesting perspective. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how the full logic works, but like it does trigger a basic blast, which will destroy blocks. Then it's going to trigger what's called a mutation call and... I think the other one is now called a radiation call. So the mutation call is what's going to actually turn certain entities into things like zombies. And the radiation call is what's going to actually break the blocks. Now the radiation call itself is customizable. So you can go into the config um, to your heart's content and you can change every behavior about it. You can tell it, I don't want it to replace grass or I do want it to replace grass. Or I want to change grass into gold blocks, for example. You have the ability to do that. It can be any block, any content, whatever do. Let me go ahead and set this off. So the hole itself hasn't changed all that much, but this is outer effect here, which has kind of changed. I am hoping to randomize a little bit because that perfect circle there kind of looks a meh. But you can see it stripped all the leaves off of Dino trees. It's off the trees themselves alone. I do eventually want to turn these to more of a charcoal effect, as well as cause the branches to fall off, but I'm not bothering too much with adding support for trees in general, let alone Dino trees. Um, but you can see it kind of stripped them off. It left them decayed. It killed all the grass in the area. Uh, it will kill just about any plants. It will also replace almost any dirt or soil like block with this. So if you have paved um, dirt or you have farmland or something else, it will replace it. Um, same thing with stone. It will basically replace all stone types with uh, this radioactive stone here. Um, when you do mine this stone or you do mine this dirt, you will get back that radioactive block. That block is meant to be unusable. My hope is later on Atomic Science will let you pull that radioactive material off of the block and then reduce the block again. As I want the cleanup process to be somewhat annoying because it gives you that second guessing ideal of do I really want to use a nuke? Because if you use a nuke on an area that you want to capture, you now have to deal with the aftermath of having to clean it up, which this stuff goes down in the ground pretty far. Um, I do hope to fix that and make it not go all the way down, but the idea would be that you need to be able to cont contaminate that soil, contaminate everything that isn't like the rock itself. The rock, I kind of want to limit how deep it goes because um, in the real world, radioactive material would only get so deep into a rock because it would rather really be creeping in through the cracks and porous material of the stone. 
So things like sandstone would be um, highly susceptible to radioactive material getting into them, where things like marble probably wouldn't. So there'd be different behaviors from different blocks, and I really want to hopefully support that and add pathfinding. So that gets that shown off. Um, and I can't remember what other content we've changed. Oh, the other big thing I need to make sure I show off, because I keep forgetting it's a thing, because um, the anti-missile system really just isn't something that's prioritized very much. But in this update, um, I also worked on the radar system and actually got it behaving, I, I guess would be better. It's still not perfect. I still really want to rewrite this and actually, you know, spend a lot more time on it. But this actually should get us to a point where bases are now protectable um, and they should behave a lot better. Now, the SAM missiles themselves um, have more customization options in the configs. You now can flip them to behave on radar map only. You also can change the range by which they detect. By default, it uses an infrared sensor that has a 30 meter range. So if it can't see the missile it's trying to shoot, it will not follow the missile. It will not attack it. Um, you can flip this to radar map and increase it so you can get that radius out and it will help with performance because if you're using a radar map, it's faster than using the in-world infrared type system because infrared is not really built into the game. So what we're doing is we're actually projecting a bounding box and asking for all entities nearby and then we're asking, can we actually see the entity? And it will answer yes or no, depending on what it's looking at. This is part of the reason why missiles had a hard time you know, tracking and hitting things um, is that range is so tiny. Um, so for those who want to take the extra performance hit, you can increase that range. And you can also flip it to the radar map to decrease the performance cost and make it function a little bit more cheaty in a way. Um, but for those who want to stick with the base version and keep it the 30, um, if you have a radar station, and let me make sure I am actually setting, remember how to do this. My brain just skips like five steps and then forgets how things work. Um, settings, that's no, not settings, that's statistics. It's mod options. So let me go in here real quick and make sure I've got power disabled. Well, I guess I'm not getting in there at all because apparently <laughs> the config is broken. Well, we're going to have to hope we don't require power real quick because I don't want to have to go through a setup of putting a whole bunch of machines together just to test this feature. But we can get here, get this set up. Uh, I do think this does need to be pre aimed to some extent, but otherwise it won't let you lock the missiles. I'm really hoping that background noise I'm hearing, yeah, is fire crackle. It almost creates a radiation sound effect, even though that's accidental, by the fact that all these blocks are procking a fire effect. Uh, but what you do want to do is you do want to make sure that you have both of these linked to the same radio signal. This is also the reason why this has always been empty by default, is the launchers were always meant to be linked to something else. So we have this radio signal both set to the same. Those are both on. Um, that looks pretty good. And then what I can do... Let me grab the smoke missile so I don't destroy anything. I need to keep that as well. And this will, on the radio signal, not really prioritize one launcher to fire. So if you put five launchers on this, it's going to fire all five launchers. So keep that in mind um, that th there's still a little bit better to set up the redstone system just to keep yourself from burning through ammo. Uh, but I need a launcher and we will set this to be tricked. What I'm going to do is fire this over top. Oh, it's still a little slow. Let's try this again. And as you saw, it basically aimed and it fired immediately. And if you had this set up to, you know, hold a lot of missiles and be fed, you know, directly with things, which you can do. So if you're using something like Mechanism, you can come over here and then grab, in this case, I'm going to grab a Crater Burn just so I don't have to keep reloading it. But I can grab something like this. I come over here and I could put this like right there. Now, ideally, you don't want to actually do directly in here, so I'm going to move a few lines over. Um, but I can put like a SAM missile in here, and you can see it will reload. And then I can sit here and fire. And it will aim. And the problem with this is where it gets a little tricky, is it does take a little bit of time to aim, but it will try to pre-aim. So this is where you still want to pre-aim your launchers in the direction you think you're getting your attack from. This is kind of how the old version worked too, the expectation with how the old version worked is that you would pre-aim your launchers and the radar was only supposed to give you a, a last updated coordinate before your launcher fire. But it now pre-aims and now fires and now will try its hardest to aim and fire at incoming threats. And it's semi-reliable. Like, you know, if you had enough of these sitting around and covering your base, you actually could have base protection. Uh, that's a lot better than what it used to be. Uh, most effective on cruise launchers, because cruise launchers don't have a delay on fire. If you use silos, you will have a delay. So keep that in mind with how you set these up and how you distribute these. The best suggestion I can say when it comes to placement, place the radar towards the direction you're thinking about getting attacked from. 
then place your launchers behind here. And you might want to hook up one or two per radar, and you might want to orbit your base with those in like a, a defensive perimeter. Uh, do bear in mind that if a missile is being fired from long distances, I don't know why I threw that smoke missile away, but um, if you are firing from like a ballistic angle, it is going to have a much, much harder time uh, actually hitting. Let me get that smoke missile back out again. So if I aim this and I aim it like say directly on top of it, um, the launcher, it will actually somewhat have a trouble. I actually didn't have a trouble hitting it anyways. Um, but yeah, so this will actually have some of a difficulty hitting at times. Actually, it might still be working perfectly fine. Nope, it still went down. Yeah, so the missiles when they come down from orbit are incredibly insanely fast. Yeah, so it's not even detecting in time. So you're still going to have problems from long distance fired missiles. So you're going to want to continue spreading your missile launchers out and hopefully intercept them as they come down because this is probably not going to detect fast enough to take them out. It is very much going to vary on where that missile is coming from. Yeah, it's not detecting quick enough. Um, this does actually have a very small detection grid. This does go from the top of the map to the bottom of the map though, so when you're setting these ranges, it already is detecting to the top. It's just the problem is when that missile comes in from like 255Y, the time it takes to go from 250Y to down is like less than a second. So you will have that problem still, but for certain kinds of missiles fired from certain directions and so on from where your launchers are placed, you will have enough time to hit things. And I think all I'm gonna have to do is increase the Y elevation where the missile comes down and this might have enough time to react. But that's a bit about all I wanna show off with this uh, preview two release. Um, and hopefully I'll have some more for you here later.